The world is in a massive transition. Are you prepared? Hi, I'm Reverend Tracy L. And I am here to help you navigate through these uncharted waters. Many experts told me it was not possible to repair, regenerate, and restore my body. I proved them all wrong. Isn't it time for you to reclaim what is rightfully yours? If your answer is yes, then I invite you to join me while I will help you embrace the new earth and unlock your unlimited potential. Let's connect every Tuesday, 8 a.m. Pacific, 11 a.m. Eastern, right here on The Tracy L. Clark Show, as featured on Transformation Talk Radio. The old ways of connecting are done, so let's embrace together the new and unleash the superhuman within. Good morning, everybody. Welcome back. No matter where you listen to us, we are so happy to have you live or later on one of our 90 outlets. And it is always a pleasure to be able to bring new thoughts, new ideas, new people. And as you know, we're always shifting the energy. It is September 1st today. Can you believe that? Oh my gosh, where is the the month gone? 2020 is going to be over in a blink. I think we're all ready for 2020 to be done. But the best thing about this time is I know for a lot of you that listen, you said you've been able to take time to go within, taking time to really reevaluate your life, what you're doing, your health, what's happening. And you know, I am a big fan of helping you not only expand what you can do physically in your body, but energetically, mentally, emotionally, it all comes together. This has been the year to really figure out what you need to do different. This is why I'm so excited today that we have Dr. Navaz Habib on our show. He wrote an incredible book and I, you know, I lost it. It was interesting. And I sort of messed up our show, my fault, and I know why, because I found it, got to read it. It was an incredible book, Activate Your Vagus Nervous System, Your Vagus Nerve. I, if you can see us, if you're watching uh, Facebook Live or YouTube, you'll see it here. But um, if you're listening, we're going to talk more about this today, Unleash Your Body's Natural Ability to Heal. We had some cross synchronicities going there. We love that word, unleash, which is incredible because you have so much power. So we're going to get right into it because functional medicine is what it's about today understanding why and this is why i am so thrilled to have you here navaz with me today thank you for coming and joining us i'm absolutely honored to be here thank you so much you know i love what i was just saying to you off here i love one of the things i love about your book and we're going to get into it is because it's easy to read and a lot of people struggle with a lot of information now it comes and you, you need something that's easy to read and easy to explain what's happening But before we get into that, because what I love is I love your energy. I love your new thought direction, where you're going. We've had some great chats off off air as well. And why can you let our listeners know? Because you have your own story that led you to functional medicine. And I really believe wholeheartedly for everybody listening that functional medicine is the new way. It, it, It has to be the new way. And as we're in this world of letting go of the old, This is why it's prime time. So can we start first with what was your big aha moment that shifted you into actual functional medicine? Yeah, it's a great place to start. And and knowing that somebody has gone through a journey uh, just gives you kind of an idea of why they do what they do and why what brought me into functional medicine. And So my story actually begins uh, many years ago when I was in my 20s, I actually... um, weighed 250 pounds. I had high blood pressure, high blood sugar. I was borderline diabetic. Um, and I was at chiropractic college. I was learning to be a chiropractor. I was learning about health. And yet I didn't know how to manifest that in myself. I had uh, some sort of block. I had some issue going on within me that I didn't realize. And uh, I, I essentially was was saying to myself, there was a uh, a lack of of coherence between what I was trying to learn and share with the world and what I was doing with myself. And finally I, I gave in and and my aha moment happened when I, uh, I tried to lose weight. I tried to get rid of some of the health challenges that I was dealing with. But when it happened, it was when I decided to look for why it was happening, decided to figure out the root cause behind my health challenges and it was because I was introduced to a gentleman, uh, my mentor, uh, Sachin Patel, who actually uh, taught me about functional medicine. He brought me into the functional medicine realm. And what functional medicine is, is a way of thinking, a way of looking at 
and investigating the actual root cause of biochemical health issues within the body. And even deeper than that, actually going into the different types of stressors, stuff that we can definitely get into a little bit more today. And by doing so, what we were able to uncover was there were some biochemical challenges that I was experiencing that were leading to my health challenges. And with a few simple changes, with a few simple exercises, a few basic things that I committed to doing on a regular basis, the weight started to fall off. I eventually lost 75 pounds. I got rid of my high blood sugar. My blood pressure came down into the optimal zone. Everything really started to open up and I started to not have these issues anymore. The issues that my medical doctor at the time just wanted to prescribe medications for, didn't know how to talk through the lifestyle changes, the habits and the the root cause of these challenges. And, And that was for me, the biggest piece of the puzzle was uncovering what those root causes were and then learning to address those. And that's why I got into functional medicine because it had such a profound effect on my life. I had to get into it and start sharing it with more people. I I love your story. Something you just said, I actually just did a video I'm posting this week on was habit. I think, do you find that when people are making changes, like there, there is a habit of, oh, I have a pain. Okay. I'll run to the doctor rather than, you know, like we get into all these habits and they're hard to break. What did you find or what do you find with your patients is the biggest shift in there because they have to have a whole mental perception shift and and getting rid of some of these habits. Where do you find their big blocks are? Yeah. What I find the thing that, that encourages people to actually make those changes and actually experience them is becoming aware of the triggers that cause them to go into those habits. When you understand your triggers, when you understand that for me, one of my biggest triggers is uh, sitting down on the couch 9.30, 10 p.m. uh, and turning on the TV and then all of a sudden feeling a little bit munchy. That's that's a habit, but it's something I'm aware of. And I know Mm -hmm. that that's a trigger for me. Right. And just having that that comfort feeling of uh, something that me and my mom used to do every Thursday night, we would watch ER, we would sit down on the couch and uh, turn on CTV in Toronto here and, and watch ER uh, from 10 to 11. It was our, our routine, and it was just a comfortable place for me, but we would always have some sort of snack with us. We would always have this routine, and I didn't realize that that was a habit that I had created. And so now when I sit down on the couch either uh, with my wife or just to kind of tune out for, for a little bit, I'll, I'll notice all of a sudden I get a little bit munchy. I get a little bit... Uh, salivating and it's it's something that's been there and that's that's manifested from a long time but it's really being able to acknowledge and understand and look deeper to find out what those triggers are and that requires mindfulness that requires attention and that's where the people that actually do uh, successfully overcome a lot of the health challenges and the habits that they've created is when they start looking for that and, and getting into more of that mindfulness yeah, I, I'm glad you said. I always say it's usually with food. You a lot of times you see it's filling some sort of void. There's a void. I and I was I was talking to someone about that the other day, and she said she's noticed since changing, like what emotions are coming up. Like you said, you can. That was a comfort thing, right, for you with your mom and ER. I forgot about that. I was an avid ER show. You said, "Oh my God, I forgot about that show." But it, it's true, and I. That I think is a big thing too. Is people needing to take responsibility because it's easy to say that's hard, right? Or looking at something very different. So what do you find are the biggest questions or, so they're coming from a medical environment, like we said, just here, like you said, you experienced with your doctor, let's give you another pill, which we know a pill just masks the problem, guys. Like everybody listening, they know it masks it. Now I'm not saying it's not there for short term or whatever, but long term, it's just masking an, an underlying issue. And that's what you're saying as well. What do you find is the biggest, I guess, maybe uncomfortable space or shift in someone when they come to you and they say, okay, I've been taking all this medicine and this is what's happening. So now you have to change their perception. What is that journey when someone first comes to you and shows up and says, okay, now what? Because obviously they need help. It's not working. What do you, what do you find is, are those roadblocks? Because they have been conditioned medicine, medicine, medicine. Yeah. Uh, great question. And for me, the the biggest roadblock, the thing that I find that most people, um, and, and I, I essentially, before I even take on a client, I'll make sure to sit down with them and, and uh, go through a whole uh, call with them to determine if they are still kind of stuck in that mindset or not, or if they're able to take on the challenge of this. 
but it's learning that you actually have to do the work to get rid of it yourself. We have this mindset that there's a pill for every ill, that the medical system is there to take care of us. And the responsibility does not lie with the government mandated system, the the OHIP based system here in Ontario, the, the Canadian payer system. It's not a healthcare system. They're not trying to make you healthier. They're just trying to make sure that you don't die. They're trying to make you less sick. And that to me is, is the biggest mind sh- mindset shift that people need to take on and realize that it's their own actions, the choices that they make, the habits that they work on, that they address, that they create new habits for that are going to have that very positive effect on them being able to overcome the challenges that they are experiencing. I love, love that you just said that. I say this all the time. Like people say to me, when I had to shift my whole, you know, I lived in the medical system for 32 years. When I had to shift out of that, it was so foreign. But people say to me, how much money did you spend on your own? Whatever. I'm like, I don't care. Like I did the work and I know it's like, I will do whatever because I want a healthy body. And what I love about what you do is you look at the whole body. You're not just saying, okay, you have a pain in your, in your gut. So you have leaky gut. So I don't know, do this. Like you're actually looking at all of that. You're looking at the stressors. You're looking at the triggers. You're looking at the nervous system, which I know in energy work and energy medicine, our nervous systems, they're, they're like, although our heart creates, that's our manifesting of our heart drive, but our nervous systems are incredible with the amount of information they store. You must find that, so do you, do you, I, okay, I want to actually, I'm going to dive here because it's a good place. In your book, I love how you talk about the nervous systems. I love it. Can you explain to people a little bit about the difference, you know, between your sympathetic, your parasympathetic, your vagus, like your, you know, your central nervous system? Because people aren't educated on this and they think, oh, I got to be a doctor. But what I see is the more you start to understand how your own body works, which you teach, the more you get these miraculous things go away. Yeah, 100%. And the nervous system, I think, is is something that we have that no other... Um, species? <laughs> Nothing else. No yeah. To go, yeah. <laughs> no other species on the planet has uh, in, in able to, to actually use to create positive change. You'll always watch whatever animal it is that you watch. You can watch birds, you can watch dogs, they have the same habits. They don't change their habits. They're built for survival. They're built to to do certain things, but we are built to thrive. And that's the reason why we're able to grow. And I believe that our nervous system, the way that it's built allows us to do so because we can actually shift ourselves from that survival state into a thriving state. And we can manipulate or we can change our physiology accordingly to make those changes occur. So let's get into kind of the basics of the nervous system and where this is coming from. Our nervous system is made up of our brain, our spinal cord, and all of the nerves within our body. It's how we get information from outside to our brain to process that information and send information out to create a level of balance or homeostasis. Balance is what we're looking for. Homeostasis or keeping things level, keeping things functioning at a, at a proper level is what we want. When stress comes in and our nervous system perceives said stress or senses said stress, then we have to process that information and create a response in accordance to that stressor. So what we'll do is increase our cortisol levels. We'll increase our reaction towards it. If it's a, an immediate threat, we'll turn on our fight and flight system accordingly. These are all things that our nervous system does, but there's certain things that we consciously are thinking about, which is where the majority of our uh, central nervous system kind of functions. And then we have things that are automatically happening in the background, things that we're not consciously thinking about. I'm not consciously thinking about my liver detoxifying <laughs> my food from this morning. It's not consciously thinking about digesting my omelet that I had for breakfast, right? I'm not consciously thinking about those things, but they're happening. And so those automatic processes are controlled through sensed and uh, sent signals back to through the autonomic nervous system or the automatic nervous system, if we want to make it simple. And there's two parts to this automatic nervous system or autonomic nervous system. The first is the sympathetic side, 
which is that fight, flight, reactivity side. It's the survival side. And it's an important side. It's something that we actually need. Too many times. It's something I think everybody's in most of the time in our world right now. This is exactly right. (laughs) And and if we ever go and we look at uh, the work of um, Bruce Lipton, for example, Bruce Lipton very clearly pointed out that uh, about 70% of people at any given time are living in that sympathetic nervous system, fight or flight state. And what we're essentially doing is we're increasing our heart rate. We're increasing our, our blood flow to our muscles and so that we can uh, fight or run away from whatever threat or stressor is affecting us at that time. And that's a problem. We should only be in that state about 10 or 15% of the time. It shouldn't be significantly more than that. We shouldn't be under stress constantly. What we should be doing is being in that parasympathetic side, which is the opposite of the sympathetic. And what we should be doing is in that state, rest, digest, and recovery. Those three words, and we often think just rest and digest being the important side, but recovery is also the most important piece of the puzzle that's missed out on that parasympathetic side of the system. And so what's happening with the parasympathetic side is digestion. We're making sure to produce stomach acid. We're making sure to actually pump our food along our intestines. We're making sure to extract the nutrients from those things specifically. We're also making sure to breathe and make sure that our breath is happening the way that it should be using our diaphragm. We'll talk a lot about that as we go through this. But the parasympathetic side is essentially where we recover from the stressors that come up during the day. And we will have stressors as we should. We should be able to have some positive eustress and negative distress that affect us. And we're supposed to be able to respond to that stress or react to that stress in a very positive way as much as possible. And as those stressors build up, we should be able to recover as quickly as possible. So we need to have a balance between the sympathetic and the parasympathetic. But if we're sitting in that sympathetic 70% of the time, we're not able to recover enough. And this is where we eventually get into a state of disease where we are unable to handle the stressors and they then create symptoms in our body. We start becoming anxious because we're not breathing correctly. We stop being able to extract the correct nutrients from our food in our gut. And so we don't get those nutrients in. And all of a sudden our thyroid is having issues. And all of a sudden our skin is showing acne and psoriasis and eczema and the leaky gut that's showing up because we are unable to properly push food along through the intestines is allowing bacteria that we should have in our gut to get into the wrong places or to expand the wrong population. And we get into a state of dysbiosis or imbalance of the microbiome. This is where we then get into these challenges, these specific health-based challenges, and people are diagnosed with autoimmune conditions and diagnosed with skin conditions and gut conditions. And then they go and they see their doctor and their doctor says, you're being diagnosed or labeled with this condition And the only known treatment for this condition is this medication. Yeah. Or you get to a point where I was, where I had a hundred labels and then they say to me, well, I don't know, manage it. Nothing more we can do for you. Hey, you know, manage. And this is why your work is so important because, and I love it. I love because energetically love Bruce Lipton. What you were saying is under people, when you understand what your body's telling you, it's also easier for you if someone can also show up and say, all right, I understand what's going on in my body. I need some help. Or like you're saying, 70% of the population in fight or flight mode, I'm sure that's higher now, right now with what's going on, that there's so much misinformation, so much disconnection from all these systems. And when the body's in there, like I'm, I, you and I talked about this when my body was born in there. So it shook like a little leaf, right. And constant fight or flight mode. And it's, I think that's the key where people really need to start to look at their lives. And this is a great time and say, what do I really need to change? Cause that alone can, right. Can start to bring down that, that fight or flight. So the para can actually come in sometimes i think like maybe that para is like so far in the corner they forget that that nurse doesn't even exist yeah. do you notice that with people because yeah. it seems like they're just constant stress mode anxiety mode and but it's hard for people to want to get out of that it's like yeah. it becomes their best friend yeah it's a very difficult thing to to change because that stress and that response to stress is a habit 
And yeah. it's something that we've built up and it's built up in our language. We don't even realize the extent of our language That's and the huge. thoughts that we have in our self-talk, the effect that that then has on our stress levels. So 100% I agree uh, it, it has to do like there, it's a difficult thing to get out of. Well, and one of the things that for people that I love, which works so well is I, I love that you brought up talk because I'm always saying to people, watch what you say, watch your words. And I was um, having an osteopath adjust me. The other day. I like osteopaths for my body. He says, I've never met anyone in my whole career who tells their body to do something and it listens. So if it was struggling, I'm like, okay, body, let that go. Release it. It's fine. We don't need to hold on to the trauma. Off it goes. And like your body just does exactly what you tell. And this is what it is. If you understand energy like you do and understand and understand functional medicine like how you do and they all work so well together because you're ed- you're actually educating your patients you're educating them on what their body's doing because every organ talks every organ like I love what you just said you said we don't pay attention if we're going to digest the breakfast you ate in the morning because your body knows what to do. You don't have to say, okay, tummy, let's get going. Let's turn the light switches on and digest. You can, I guess, have that conversation. But the intricate parts of the body, and this is what you do, is you take it, that whole step, body, soul, spirit, mind, and you're looking at the person as a whole. And that's what I also, for people to say, if you're having high stress, like, what, what are you finding right now? Because this has been a high stress year for most people, right? Probably one of the most for most. I'm having a blast. Like I, but I, I knew something was coming this year. I didn't know it was going to be a virus, like to shake our world out. We knew it was going to change. But I also know what it's like to live there. And I know what it's like to never live there again. So obviously a little bit, people knew I had some trauma a week ago, but that said high stress, normal, had to bring it down. Body went into shock, but that was rare, weird, you know? <laughs> so what do you find right now? with your patients is the number one thing that you're noticing and what you're recommending for them through this period of time of stress that's affecting their body? Yeah, it's a great question. Right as soon as everything kind of started, as soon as March really hit, um, I was lucky enough to be in, on a beach in the Dominican when everything really kicked up in, in Canada. Take that in. Getting all my messages that Costco was empty and all those fun things. And we came back. We'll get some toilet paper. <laughs> I'm lucky enough we had, we had purchased right before we left. Yeah. And uh, once we got back, um, I said, okay, we got to figure out what this means. And I think what what the virus has done, what the situation this year has done is turn people on to the idea of health and how important their health truly is. What this virus actually shows us is it's, it's actually exploiting the metabolic and the inflammatory conditions that people already have. The people that are being very negatively affected by this, those who are unfortunately in the hospital, those who are dealing in ICU with, with significant symptoms of uh, the coronavirus itself, for the most part, the actual stats are something, it's a staggering number, 90-something percent of them are dealing with some sort of metabolic dysfunction, whether it's wow. obesity, diabetes, some sort of autoimmune condition, or some sort of inflammatory condition. It's, it's just staggering, showing us how important having a good functioning overall body system is. And so for me, what, what this year has kind of done, and, and the things that my patients have been noticing is, they just really feel like they need to get their immune system up and running and in balance. And their immune system, they're now realizing, actually isn't just a uh, thing on its own. It's actually going to be involved in so many other systems. It's actually strongly involved in the liver function. It's involved in metabolic dysfunction, in your blood sugar balance. It's involved in your weight. It's involved in your hormones. It's involved in every single aspect of your body. Everything works together. It's an orchestra that your body is is built as an orchestra. And this essentially for me, what the virus has done is, is shown people that our bodies don't work in silos. We don't have an immune system and we don't have a digestive system and we don't have a nervous system. They all work together and we need to make sure that we're putting in the right nutrients. We're making sure that we're managing stress the right way because if one thing goes wrong, the entire orchestra fails. The entire orchestra goes down. Yeah, I love that analogy because it's so true. They they all are talking. They're all in sync. They all need to keep moving forward. And that's why that's why right now I love that more people are paying attention 
they they need to pay attention and like you said be active like you can't i love you said this earlier and i wanted to touch on it is so many people want this quick fix they really do they want to say i'm sure they come to you and they'd really like you to just give them a pill and make everything change and what i notice and you can please jump in with what you've noticed with yourself and patients is that it's not if you want it to totally change and restore your life no quick fix is ever going to work and this is still i i see it a lot with people all, all over the world We're, we both work with people all over the world and it's like, well, I just, I just want this little powder. I want this little pill. And, but I'm like, that doesn't create change. And change that it happens in even three months or six months, like you said, you can still fall off the wagon. You can still be sitting there going, oh, no, like I just ate a bag of chips at 9 o'clock because something, something triggered me or something came up. And I think this is, would, you can agree or disagree, but would you say this is one of the biggest things we got to get through people's brains is a quick fix is going to be a failure in the end. It means you're yeah. going to be right back to where you started. Yeah, I I think it comes down to a very simple idea that it it didn't take a second for you to get into the situation that you're in. Chronic health conditions don't happen like this. Oh God, no. It's not a car accident that's no. broken a bone. It's yeah. something that you've built up, unfortunately, and, and without any fault of your own, but, but it's something that you've done in your life, habits, lifestyle factors, foods that you've eaten, stressors that you haven't been able to handle, uh, trauma that you've had in the past, things that you've gone through that have actually led you down this path. And it's all, it's multifactorial. There isn't a single pill that's going to make a change. There isn't a single quick fix. It's, it's like a get rich quick scheme. You're never going to get rich off a get rich quick scheme. It doesn't actually work. If you create change, if you create a habit, if you actually work through that and you understand the triggers that are causing those habits and those lifestyle factors to occur, you can accelerate the speed at which the, the change and the transformation happens. But it's never, ever a quick fix, which is why programs with me last anywhere between three months and 12 months. I work with people for a long period of time. I coach them through a lot of the changes that I experience with them depending on the severity of their challenges, we make sure to get the right testing done to figure out what's going on from the right, the right way. It's not just basic blood work. We want to know what's going on with cellular function, with your gut function, with hormones. We want to know all of those aspects. And once we get those, then we can say, okay, well, here are your daily routine habits. Here are some of your triggers. I actually have like a 46-page intake form that I do with people as well. It's so many factors. And if we just say that it's a quick fix, people are doing a disservice by saying it's a a quick fix by by offering a a single pill that's going to make a huge change. It just doesn't exist. We see it. And it's been, it's actually been programmed into people's brains with media and everything. Type this and you're going to look like this. And I always say that when your body has shown up with something, you've ignored everything else for far too long. That's your body, like you said. 10, 15 years of damage or whatever, what you're eating. And then the body's like, hello, you're not paying attention. So now I'm going to make you pay attention. One of the things I, can you expand? So, because I like this too, and this is another thing you do that's very different than the medical system, which I love. You just said it. You look at all of their blood work. You look at them as a whole being because you're different from me. So what you might require is going to be very different than what I require. So how long does that process take? So someone comes in and they're like, hey, I'm ready. Can you explain? So if people are listening going, what is this process going to look like for me? If I'm going to call them out and say, okay, because I say to people, you need to go see a functional medicine doctor, clean out the emotions. We'll work on that. You need to be on this. But then their question is, okay, I'm unique. What does it look like? So can you walk through what does that look like for a person just showing up? Yeah, the programs that we build are individualized to each person. And I completely concur on that on that point that you said. Uh, you could have a billion people diagnosed with the same condition, but every single one of them got there a different way. They all had their own path to get to that label. And that's why I don't rely on the diagnoses. I'll use them as a signpost. It's a sign that something's going wrong with a specific organ or or a specific area. But we always have to look deeper as to what caused that specific person to get there. And so that's why... The care that I provide is very individualized. I'll only work with people that know 
what they're getting into and know that there's work to be done to get there, right? So essentially when people call in, when people book in with me, I'll initially do a complimentary video call to figure out if they're a good fit to work with me, that they're a good fit to understand what I'm going to be offering. And if they're not a good fit, I'll, I'll offer them a recommendation to somebody else that I think might be a better option or, or refer them out to whoever I feel might be a better fit. But I'll spend that time to ensure that I'm not losing out on being able to help create a positive change in somebody who's not ready. I want to make sure that my clients are ready to put in the work. I always say, you're going to do 80% of the work. I'm going to do 20%. I'm the guide. I'm Morpheus and you're Neo. That's the way that I I love to kind of go through this. I'm going to show you the path to, to go there, but you're the one that's going to have to make the decisions. You're the one that's going to do the work. Then what we do is we have a very, very in-depth one-hour assessment following uh, you filling out that 46-page intake form that I talked about. So I want to get to know every single thing about you from your uh, family history to your current history to your current diet to what's going on with your gut, what's going on with your stress, what are the habits, what are the things that have come up. And I look through that and I kind of really... Uh, go through that with a fine tooth comb to understand where the blind spots might be. The things that you aren't realizing, the little challenges that you aren't personally realizing are going to affect your health in a negative way. So maybe on occasion, you're having a little bit too much red wine, or maybe on occasion, you're triggering this negative emotional response because your neighbor has this uh, bug zapper in the backyard or something (laughs) like that, right? We have all of these same challenges that we need to address, but different people have different challenges and we have to figure out where those stressors are. So my job is to peruse through all of that and to say this, 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 and this. Here are the five things that I've found right off the bat, even before I do any testing, here's where I can see the stressors are coming. And then we recommend certain testing to figure out, okay, what's going on with your nutrient status? Are your cellular function working well or not? What's happening with your gut? Do we have the right bacteria, parasites, viruses, yeast, worms? Are there challenges that might be there that people don't realize? Yes, the words that I said, they all exist. And yes, I have yes, photographic they exist. evidence. <laughs> I agree. I've seen it all. Yeah, I agree with you. They do exist, people. If you're listening, worms, parasites exist in physical form. I've seen them. Come yeah, out of the- and we have like I have photo proof from patients that have released them. They you don't need to see it, but you just have to know that. What is with that? I had a client send me. I'm like, I do not need to see that. Please keep that on your own phone. Yeah. <laughs> It's wonderful to to know that the changes are happening. It's not the best to obviously need to see those pictures. <laughs> but then when I get to know what's going on from the right testing, then I'm able to take the right steps and say, okay, these this is the challenge. First, we need to start with this specific issue. This is where you, we need to work. So for, for a lot of people, I'm addressing liver function right off the bat because the liver for me is a conductor of the orchestra. 100%. We need to make sure that the liver is is functioning at a high level. And we want to make sure that your cells are producing enough energy. Energy is how we get stuff done. Our cells can't do the job if they can't produce chemical energy, ATP. Mm-hmm. So we need to make sure those things are happening. And then we'll get into a little bit of, okay, let's fix up the bacteria and the parasites and get rid of the stuff that shouldn't be there and bring in the stuff that should be there. You know, it, It's crazy to see. Sometimes we'll notice people have the worst, absolute craziest symptoms. And all they have is a really low level of good bacteria and no bad bacteria present, which is crazy to think. But low levels of good bacteria actually play as much of a role as having seven parasites in your gut. It's just crazy to think. Um, And parasites also feed off of negative emotions and they feed off sugar. Like if you're negative, you're going to have lots of parasites going on in your body. Yeah, 100%. And and this is something that I've correlated. The, the testing that I use is genetic testing. So it's very, very strong, very accurate. Um, there's no, like, it's all based and rooted in science. And I think this is where functional medicine actually has done the right thing is, is we've progressed within the scientific community using actual science the way that we know. And, and I don't believe that there isn't something to be said for things that haven't been proven yet. Mm-hmm. It just hasn't been proven yet. We just haven't built out the right tools to do so. But this is why that testing is so important because it actually helps us identify from an individual perspective what each person needs. 
And, and then, then I would imagine it would also help you so you can retest and then see, right? So you actually can give them a progress report. The progress reports, that, that progression is really uh, one of the most important things because you can actually physically see change occurring. You can actually see the changes that, that need to occur. And this is the best way to do so. Yeah, and mentally as well. Like it, it's such a big, it, it's amazing how, I know I see it with people where, whatever they're putting in their body and their stresses, their brain has, you know, it can have all the way up right now to a lot of people are not putting the right things in their body and they're, they're having suicidal thoughts. They're having really negative thoughts. And those are the parasites that come in and parasites. Also, you probably know this too, but um, they develop when you have too much medicine that you shouldn't be having in your system because your yeah. body knows what it's doing like a hundred percent. Yeah. Here's the crazy stat that I, I love to kind of point out our body has 50 trillion human cells, anywhere between 40 and 60 trillion human cells within it. But just within our large intestine, we have 100 trillion bacterial cells. Wow. 100 trillion bacteria live in your gut. And that population plays such an expansive and major role in your health. You don't even realize it. They break down our food for us. They actually provide us with, and here's a crazy stat. You were talking about anxiety, depression, mood-based disorders. 94% of our serotonin, serotonin being the mood molecule, the molecule that's linked to depression, 94% of our serotonin is actually produced by our gut bacteria and goes into our enteric nervous system, the nervous system, the, the nerves in and around the gut. So if you ever have that gut feeling you actually have to listen to it but a gut feeling is a real thing the enteric nervous system oh, yeah. the nerve endings around the gut from the vagus nerve okay. yes i love can you repeat that again 94 94 percent of all of our serotonin is located within our enteric nervous yeah. system wow. our mood our serotonin our mood molecule is built there 78% of our dopamine, our motivation molecule, the reward-seeking, that habit-forming molecule is located within the enteric nervous system. Your gut plays a huge role. And you'll always, if you ever talk to any functional medicine doctor, the first thing they'll look at is your gut, 100%. Yeah. I always say that energetically, that's our big processing center of all life, right? It goes off. And exactly, you're just, I love what you're saying there. And, and I find that because people are so stressed and really in, maybe they're just running from thing to thing and they're eating not what their body likes and putting things in. And no wonder there's such high levels of anxiety and depression. And, and it doesn't have to be, this is when I like look at what you do and I look at what I do and I'm like, people, you don't have to live like this. You're proof. I'm proof. We don't have to live like this. Once you start to get, educated that's why i say everyone you guys gotta wait, okay i'm gonna jump here quickly and i want to talk to the breath because i can't believe we're running out of time here um <laughs> is your, your book's on amazon right it is on amazon yeah, yeah. is that the best place or, or your website the easiest place uh is amazon for sure okay so um activate your vagus nerve and website let's give your website vagusnervebook.com or you can just go to healthupgraded.com Love it. Okay. I want you to talk about, you talk about it in the book and you said it at the top of the hour. And I really want people to get this because I a thousand percent agree with you, the breath. Because most people don't breathe properly. I know after I had my stressful moment, um, uh, uh, two Sundays ago, almost my breath went shallow. My, my organs all cramped up. I was like, Oh shoot. I got to move that around. Coffee stress, right? Talk about the breath. Why it's so important. Yeah. We, we, I think, um, in my book, I talked about Joseph Pilates, one of the things he talked about in, in Love his him. book specifically. Love him. <laughs> <laughs> he pointed out that uh, people have forgotten how to breathe correctly. And, and it's, it's something I, I actually am seeing right now, even my three-year-old. I have a three-year-old daughter. And when she was born, it was to me, it was the most amazing moment of my life, obviously. But it was really cool from, from my perspective to see what nature actually allows us to do. And if you ever watch a baby breathe, you'll see that their belly is going up and down. They don't breathe with any of their chest muscles. They don't use their traps. None. They don't have tight muscles like all of us do up in the upper back and the shoulders. They have this breath, this natural breath that occurs in the gut and allows the actual diaphragm to, to go up and down. 
and actually allows motion to occur in the organs beneath it. We think that the breath is simply from a diaphragm perspective going to create a vacuum within our lungs. And that is something that it does. It absolutely does. And if you can take a deep breath in and notice that you can breathe further, you're not breathing correctly. That's an important first kind of factor. But when that diaphragm goes up and down, what it's actually doing as well is it's massaging every organ beneath the diaphragm. It's actually causing motion to occur in the liver, in the stomach, in the gallbladder, in the intestines, in the kidneys. It's getting motion to occur. I actually have a video that I show on on my PowerPoint presentations that shows the, the organs beneath the diaphragm being massaged and moved through the breath. So it's really, really important. What we've all done now is we've said, oh, I can't breathe through my belly. I can't have a big belly. I have to breathe in a different way. And we've trained ourselves to breathe in correctly. And I actually see these, these small changes starting to happen in my daughter. So I'm, I'm actively working on her to, to get the yeah. breath back to her belly. Yeah. But I see it happening. And that's why so many of us have these tight muscles because we're using our accessory breathing muscles, our traps, our levator scapulae, the muscles that when we hunch over to go on the computer are also being affected at the same time. And then when we go and we take our breaths, we're not actually using this. So the breath is for me the key. And the reason that's important is when we get into a stressful scenario and you pointed this out, your breath becomes rapid and shallow. And those rapid, shallow breaths shut off the parasympathetic nervous system which is where the vagus nerve functions and turns on the sympathetic nervous system. Your breath is the single fastest, easiest, most simple way to control your physiology and determine what state you're going to be in. And so the breath is for me, the absolute 100% key to your overall health. I I love that. And you know, people don't talk about, we take breathing for granted. I I don't because I've had three near death experiences. I'm like, I get in the morning, thank you, God, I can breathe. And after that trauma that I had recently, it was interesting because that's what I did. I came home, I laid on the floor, I was cleaning out whatever the energy, I was breathing. So what you're saying is right, it's just like taking that breath. But I noticed it took me a bit because, yes, when you go into the fight or flight mode, it was all back up here. And I used to be that person, like you were saying, where my muscle I was up here and I'm stressed and, you know, you're walking around like this and breathe. I was like, are you crazy? Like everything was this shallow breath up here. And then when it just naturally, when you get used to it, and I love, I like something you said here because what's your point of view as to why your daughter is now flipping out of her beautiful breath into, <gasps> okay, what, what do you think is happening there? What are you seeing? Is it imprinting what's your perception yeah i think it's absolutely imprinting we are watching everybody around us doing things the way that they're doing and we're taking that on as though it's correct and that that's the way things should be done or things are done and i i find that i'm doing my absolute best to make sure that she doesn't take that on and doesn't take it in completely and i focus and and we do our fun little humming session before meals and we make sure (laughs) to do our deep breathing exercises and and do her bird meditation where she listens to birds <laughs> chirping on the phone or whatever. Those are those are practices that we've instituted with her from a very early age. And so these are things that we're trying to now imprint in her in a different way to help her learn how to shift her state. But it's 100% something that we've just watched other people do, a lot of generational trauma, a lot of stress that we don't know how to handle, that we haven't been able to process that we hold on to that then creates these negative changes within us. Yeah. Holding the breath because you're afraid of what's coming next. I think that's a lot of society. And as you see in your work, so much dysfunction comes from that. And even if people learn to breathe and that's why I believe they need, they need people in their corner on a regular basis like you as well, because it is easy to fall off the train. It is easy whether it's, I, I've seen it, and I said it earlier, whether it's three months or 30 days, I, I we've all been there. You can do great for six months or a year and then fall fall off. And I think that other thing is don't beat yourself up. Just make sure you go back to where you know you need to go, correct? Exactly. Yeah, once you make that change, I, I see it all the time. Um, I work with people and we create pretty significant transformational changes, significant improvement in their overall symptoms. Like like I've had people come off their medication within a couple of months of starting to work with us. But 
people do fall back and, and habits do come up and stressors do trigger these negative responses. And so one of the things that I do that I make sure that people can, can always reach out to me, they can always kind of rely on having somebody in their corner to help them get back on track. And, and me being there is one piece of the puzzle, but the second piece of the puzzle is people need to be willing to ask for help. And when they are able to take that on, when they are able to own it themselves and say, hey, I need help, then they can actually create positive change. And you can fall off as many times as you can, but if you ask for help, you can get back on the horse every single time. You know, I think that's the biggest thing. I always say this, if you show up, I can show up. And I know you're the same way if they show up, but we can't tra- we can't track them down. Like people are like, oh, okay, that didn't work for me. I'm like, did you tell them? Did you tell them when you needed help? No. Did you reach out? No. And I'm sure you see it in your practice. I see it in mine. It's like, well, I don't know if that worked for me. Like I never once saw you show up. I never once saw you ask for help. I never once saw you say, I need this or I require. The people that do they want to be like them. But I'm like, if you notice the big difference, they're showing up. They're saying, I need to go to another level. I need to help here. Or I need help there. And then, you know, we help get them to where they need to go or however that is and get them to other people or whatever. And I, that is, that is the key. And I, yeah. I don't know if it's just a lot of times they say it's, Oh, well, they'll make excuses. They'll think you and I are too busy or whatever. I'm like, but if you're there, we're here. If you yeah. show up, Yeah, that's 99% of it. I think with the awareness, like, people you got to start showing up in your life yeah i one of the things I, I point out to everybody is nobody knows your body better than you know your body exactly and if we give away that responsibility to whoever else whether it's me or to your conventional medical doctor or to whoever else then you're giving up your own responsibility and you're actually at fault for that and i don't want to fault people i don't want to point that out but it absolutely comes down to you being willing to take on the responsibility of your own health. And that's where transformational change occurs. When people can take responsibility, change can occur. Otherwise, Yes. And that's truth because I know living in the medical system for 32 years, you know, living before you transferred over to what you're doing now, I would just say, okay, I'll take that. Like I wasn't taking any ownership. I wasn't looking, I wasn't reading. I wasn't exploring. I'm just like, cause that's how I was conditioned from the time I was, came out, you know? So I'm like, okay, okay. And then finally, you know, when they're like, I'll manage it. I'm like, I got to take responsibility. I have to show up. I have to ask. I need to. And back then I was blessed to be my energy practitioner and I had a Chinese medical doctor. So that was 17 years ago, right? So you guys didn't exist then. (laughs) I'm like, people, these years, I'm so happy you guys exist now. (laughs) And so that's where I went. But I realized I had to learn what were they telling me? Learn what was my body saying? I had to be responsible. And I love what you say here because you you can guide them, you can show them, but if they don't change that diet, if they don't, you know, look at what stress is to move, you're still going to be in the same place you were before. Yeah. I think that's the biggest thing, and this is what I love about your book, is that as an easy read, you're explaining the systems, but you're also really helping people to learn more about their body and become accountable. I love that. Like, it's just... I don't know how long it how long did it take you to write your book. It, you did a wonderful job. Uh, research was about five months. Writing was about five months, approximately. <laughs> I know my book's coming out. It was a year, but I'm just yeah. I, it's always a process, right? I know we're, we're getting to the top of the hour. What's something you want to leave with the listeners? Because I know this goes out again to all these other networks after we're live now. As always, we love it, but we're going to be hitting the net- networks. People that are listening to you right now. Um, What do you want to leave with them? And again, how can they find you? Yes, absolutely. Yeah. I think the the thing I want to leave with people is that change can occur. That once you do take that responsibility, once you do take the ownership of your own health, I've had people overcome significant health trauma, uh, significant challenges, people that that I I didn't realize I could have a positive impact on in their life. I've I've been able to be a part of their health journey. And I'll give you the story of one of my first uh, clients that I saw when I first got into functional medicine. This lady was absolutely wonderful. She was in her uh, late 50s. She um, came into the office on a scooter. Wow. She was on one of the horror, like yeah. motorized scooters. She could not walk. And it was sad because she had previously been a yoga teacher and so had completely lost her ability to perform yoga, to practice yoga in the way that she wanted to, to teach others and to, to help transform that change. 
And she had come in because there was a swelling on her spine that was pushing on her spinal cord, not allowing her to walk. And she, at this point, could not take so young too. steps at a time in her 50s, yes. And she came in, this was in probably June of, uh, I believe it was 2015 or 2016, I don't remember exactly. And she, uh, we determined what was going on. She had some bacterial overgrowths. We found out that there were some challenges in terms of liver function. We addressed these changes. She started to notice her energy was going up. She was getting better. I got an email from her three days before Christmas. And she sent, and it didn't have anything written in it. It was just a video. And it was a video of her walking down the hall. And for me, and I still, I'm getting them right I now. I got goosebumps, yeah. Bumps. I got chills too. <laughs> I was able to just say she walked. And then she sent me another message and she said, I actually walked. And I'm going to be surprising my husband with this, uh, this amazing thing. On Christmas Day, I'm going to walk in to, to see him. And I thought, this is spectacular. And to, to take it even a step further, she's actually back to teaching yoga now which is just such an amazing transformation. And we were able to address the inflammatory condition. We were able to address the root cause of her problem, where it was coming from her gut. Tell me what, what conventional doctor was able to find that challenge for her as being the root cause of this. When we addressed the right tool here, when we addressed the, the cause of it, she was able to address that change. And if she can overcome this major challenge of not being able to walk, to now going to back to teaching yoga, if she can take that on, if she can take on that responsibility and say, I can do this, then I believe that anybody is capable of making that change 100%. I love that story. And, and one of the reasons I love it so much is what you said there, <laughs> back to the manage it, which I was told, she was told to manage it. So she was in a scooter. That was the solution. Yeah. And what I love about the story for people listening, what you're saying is please don't give up. There are so many solutions. We are on the cutting edge of so many new things. This is why you don't hear a lot about functional medicine yet. It's the cutting edge. It's the the new way of being, the new way of seeing, the new way of interacting. And I just want to encourage everyone, go pick up Dr. Navaz's book, like, you have, I can't say it enough. I love, I get chills. You've, you've written it so well, so easy to read. And I really encourage people, if you're really struggling, reach out to him because you really, this is what you do. You, you care about your people. You care about seeing them walk. Like I I can't thank you enough for joining us today. It's my absolute pleasure. If anybody wants to reach out, I, I can share my websites with you as well. And yes, please um, do that now again. Yeah, you can. Because yeah, I to, want to put them in the show notes so people who are watching later will be able to click below. <laughs> but say it again if you can. <laughs> if you go to healthupgraded.com, that's the company. That's uh, myself and and my team. We take care of our clients through there through Health Upgraded. Um, you can learn more about the book at vegasnervebook.com. There's some awesome bonuses. And if you want to just book in uh, a complimentary call with me, you go to speakwithdrhabib.com, speakwithdrhabib.com, and it'll book you right into a 30-minute call with me. I love it. Thank you. I have a feeling we'll, we'll be seeing you again because there's so much more information here, and you have just been amazing today. And thank you for sharing your wisdom, your knowledge, your gifts. Um, I've gotten to know you in a different setting, and your heart's big. You care. You want to really see people succeed, and you're. I, I just am so grateful that you took this time. Thank you so much. My absolute, absolute pleasure. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you. All right, everyone, have an incredible week. Make sure you check it out. Activate your vagus nerve system so people that can see this, you can see the book. You will love it, and you will love spending more time with Dr. Navaz as I've gotten to know him. So have an incredible week. We will see you next week where we will, same time, same place, have our call-in show. So may you start your September off with a bunch of ease and grace and make yourself and your health a priority. Lots of love. We'll see you next week. Thank you for listening to The Tracy L. Clark Show with me, Tracy L., where I teach you how to connect to the God consciousness so you can unlock your superpowers and connect at light speed and live your extraordinary life. Tune in every Tuesday at 8 a.m. Pacific on Transformation Talk Radio, where together we will unlock the secrets of your body and your life. 
As the founder of the Body Regeneration Academy, I, Tracy Al, will provide you with the insight and simple tools you can apply right now in your life to move you forward and leave the past in the dust. To join the Body Regeneration TLC Online Academy, make sure you check me out at tracyalclark.com. Views expressed on this program are those of the host, guests, and callers, and do not necessarily reflect the views of the station, its management, or advertisers. You're listening to Transformation Talk Radio.